Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make another variant of the Paracord X lanyard. This time, we're going to do some braiding as well as knot work in order to produce a fancier design. Now, this design has been around for a while and I did not invent this one. So, it has been done before, but it is a particularly nice one. With that said, let me show you what you're going to need and then let's make one. This specific lanyard is designed for axes that have a hole on the bottom of the handle. You need it to feed the lanyard through and then secure it. As far as supplies go, the first thing that you're going to need is a piece of paracord. This piece is going to be used for the core of the lanyard and it is going to determine the length of your lanyard. So cut it as long as you want your lanyard to be and add an inch or two more just in case. The next set of cords is going to be this one, which is four pieces of gutted paracord. So I have removed the inner strands out of these four pieces and they should be about a third longer than your core strand. So 30% more than the core strand. These are going to be used to plate over the core strand, giving it a four strand round braid look. The next piece is going to be used for the Spanish ring knot, which we're going to place at the end. It should be at least two feet long. Finally, two pieces of type 1 paracord are going to be used at the ends of our braid in order to cover it with gaucho knots. So about a foot and a half to two feet each. You're also going to need some thread. You can also just use inner strands of your paracord and we're going to use these to whip the ends. So basically what we're going to do is tie up the ends in order to secure them. This is optional and you could just use tape but this is a much more secure method. So some thread or inner cords of paracord. Now as far as tools go, you're going to need a knife to cut the cords with, a lighter to meld them, and finally a lacing needle which is very handy for braiding our knots. So with that said, let's get to it. I'm going to start this project by taking the center piece of paracord. So this is the core. I'm going to take one of the ends and tie it off onto an object. This is so I get some tension onto this center cord. Usually I tie a loop and I attach it onto a doorknob or some sort of pipe. So like this, then take the gutted pieces of paracord Again, these four strands are 30% longer than my core strand. I'm going to place them over my core strand. Then tie everything together using a small piece of thread or inner strand of paracord. We're now going to start plating. So we have two cords on the right side and two on the left. This is the center cord and we're going to start with the top right cord going behind and through the two cords on the left then to the bottom right. We went over the top here. 
Then take your top left chord, go behind and through the two chords on the right, then back to the bottom on the left, like this. Then take the top right chord again, go behind and through the two chords on the left, then back to the bottom on the right. Take the top left chord again, go through the two chords on the right, and back to the bottom on the left. Then the top right chord goes behind and through the two chords on the left and back to the bottom on the right. Then the top left chord goes through the two chords on the right side and back to the bottom on the left. Then again, the top right chord goes through the two chords on the left and back to the bottom on the right. And again, the top left chord goes through the two chords on the right side, then back to the bottom on the left. And you can see that this is a very easy pattern to play it over a chord with. Now, if you at any point lose track of which chord you should be doing, just check which is the last one. So at this point, this is the next one since it is the last in the sequence. And again, this is the last one in the sequence, so we use that one. We're going to continue plating until we cover this entire chord or run out of chords that we used to plate with. After braiding to the very end of your chord strand, we're going to continue by taking two pieces of thread. You can just use the inner strands of paracord as well and we're going to secure the ends. These pieces of thread are about a foot to a foot and a half long. To secure the ends, we're going to do a common whipping onto each of the ends. Take a piece of thread, fold it so that you get a small bite on the end, place that bite over your end, then with the long end, start wrapping around the end. When you have only a small length of your thread remaining, feed it under and through the loop on the left side. Then pull on this thread on the right side. and pull in the left end to about the middle point in your wrap, then start pulling on the left end as well. Once done, cut the ends. 
We're coming along quite nicely. We have done the main part and we have done our whipping onto both of the ends. We're now going to feed our lanyard through the hole in our X and then we're going to finish by covering the whippings as well as adding a Spanish ring knot here at the top. So let's do it. To cover the ends, we're going to use two pieces of type 1 paracord about 2 feet long. We're going to tie a gaucho knot onto each of the ends and the gaucho knot is based on a 5 part 4 byte Turx head. I'm going to demonstrate how to tie the gaucho knots onto a mandrel because showing you with this small cord is actually quite hard. So I'm going to use a bit of a larger cord but the principle is exactly the same. For this demonstration of the gaucho knot, imagine that this mandrel is actually one of the ends. We would tie a gaucho knot directly over this whipping using some smaller cord. Attach a lacing needle onto your cord. Then take the other end and place it over the mandrel. Wrap around. Come over the standing end. Around again. Over here on the right. Take your lacing needle and travel under over towards the left side. Come around again. Alongside the standing end. Under over. Then the opposite of this cord here. Going over under over. Wrap around. And now travel in between the standing end and the working end, which are now doubled, going over, under, over. Then again the opposite of this cord, so under, over, under, over. Then pass over your standing end and travel alongside it going under then over under and finally over to on the right. Then start your next sequence with an under Over, under to over to. And again, under one, over one, under two, and over two. And the next one, under one, over two, under to over to. And again, under one, over two, under two, over two. And finally the last sequence, under two, over two, under two, over two. At this point, place your working end next to the standing end. And you have tied your gaucho knot. Now take your working end. Right where you come out of the knot, re-enter 
and go under everything towards the right side. This is just a small modification which allows you to cut the ends on the left and right side. So this is the gaucho knot that you then place onto each of the ends of your lanyard. So after tying your two gaucho knots, you have covered the whippings. At this point, you will want to shorten your ends. I'm going to leave about half an inch of length in my ends. Now, let's continue with the Spanish ring knot. The Spanish ring knot is going to be placed a bit further up in our lanyard and it is going to be a sliding knot which will enable us to make a wrist loop when needed. I'm going to tie a Spanish ring knot again onto the mandrel. You can tie it directly over the two ends and to do that you're going to need about two feet of paracord. So to tie it, take the standing end, place it over the mandrel, come around, over the standing end, around again and towards the right side. Take your working end with the lacing needle attached and go under over towards the left side. Then we have three cords here. We're going to take the middle one and place it over the right one. Like this. Then take our working end and we're going to travel under, then over towards the right side. Then take the middle out of the three cords again and place it over the left one. Take your working end with the lacing needle and go under over towards the left side. Then what we're going to do is pass over our standing end Then go under and over two. So under one, over two. Then again, under one, over two. And again, under one, over two. Then, we're going to start a sequence of under 2, over 2. And again, under 2, over 2. And one more time, under 2, over 2. At this point, place your working end next to the standing end and you have tied a Spanish ring knot. As a further modification, I take my working end and I go under two all the way to the right side and this helps you cut the ends easier on the left and right side. So guys, after placing our Spanish ring knot onto our lanyard, our project is pretty much complete. Now, if you want your Spanish ring knot to stay in place, you simply tighten it up firmly. If you want it to be more of a sliding knot that slides up and down your lanyard, in that case, you will want to join together the working and standing end in order to prevent them from slipping out so you can simply meld them together or stitch them up.
With that said guys, I hope you enjoyed this new lanyard. It is a great looking addition to any axe. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.